Hey guys, Starfield is out, or mostly out, and I've decided to make a cool new build to accompany it and to set it up in such a way that you can play it at 1440p at high quality settings. And for that, I picked a few different parts, uh, starting with this DA6 case from Stricom. Actually, it's hardly a case, it's more of a frame that you can just slot components in. Uh, we actually use Stricom a lot in our test benches. They create a great quality open air test bench and it's just very efficient and modular. Uh, same goes for this case. So I'm looking forward to building it. Uh, as far as the system is concerned, since Starfield is actually more of an AMD title, at least for now, um, it seems to perform better with AMD components. So we've gone with Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, uh, which could be a good balance between price and performance. Uh, we'll pair it with an MSI Edge Wi-Fi B650 board. This is an ITX case, so we have to get a smaller card. And then we've got some Kingston RAM, and I've actually gone with three different graphics cards. Uh, this is just more to see what will fit inside this case, as it is a small case. Um, but I think what we'll probably end up using is going to be this uh, 6900XT, uh, which is a medium-sized card, it's got a decent amount of performance, and since it's last gen, it's actually really well priced right now. For people who might want to use a smaller card, or want to go down the NVIDIA side for later generation, we also got a 4070. As you can see, this is actually going to leave loads of space for whatever you want to put in there. So, as far as the case is concerned, so I've mentioned it's quite flexible, at least they're test benches, but same goes with this. So, this way, it seems that like it's an upwards only case, but honestly speaking, these components, like for example here, this I.O. plate, it can be unscrewed and put on the opposite side. So you don't actually have an orientation for this case. You can, can go up or down, or if you want to, you can have it sideways. And um, there are a few components in the box, which basically protect your table and the case as well. The case itself is made out of aluminum and steel. One of the things that particularly stands out for me in this case is the way that they've got the anodized black finish on it. It looks just spotless and I actually can't wait to build in it, but I'm actually a bit afraid because I might leave a few scratches. So I need to be careful with it. The first step we're building in this case, and actually most RTX cases, now start with setting up the motherboard itself. So we need to get the motherboard, the RAM, the CPU installed. And um, before I forget, I actually have something quite special for cooling. This case is generally more suitable for a small air-cooled setups, but I've decided to make it a bit more fancy, a bit more custom. So I've got a Asus ROG Ryzen 3 cooler. This is an overkill and this is not cost efficient at all, but I think it will look really, really cool in an open case design where you're literally gonna have this case as a showpiece on the desk. So that's gonna be that. And for power supply, this case actually supports both ATX, ITX, and ITX L power supplies. Uh, we'll probably end up with a smaller power supply just so we have a bit more space, um, but that's something that we can explore a bit down the road. Let's get into the main building itself. So let's get the motherboard out. This is a mid-range card from MSI, and it's more than enough for an eight core chip that we have over here. So let's just get all the bits out. So we will need the antennas for the Wi-Fi. And uh, we actually won't need any of these cables, so we can leave that to the side. Comes with stickers. You can have stickers for the RGB cables, so you know which one is going where. That's actually really cool, I like that. For drive, we're using a Sabrent one terabyte drive. And as you see here, it's all kind of color matching. We've got a silver, white, and black aesthetic. One of the things that's very convenient on this board is the little thermal pad covers have a little overhang so you can actually put your finger under and pull it off. Um, when it's just straight cut, it's just very, very inconvenient. So I like this. Besides having an M2 slot below this heatsink over here with a little fan for it, there's also another slot at the back here, which is very convenient. So you can actually set the system up, especially in a system like this, and install that drive at some, some point in the future without rebuilding the whole system. As far as the RAM is concerned, it's actually some new RAM that we received from Kingston, and I'm making a review on this, so that's coming up. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Um, let's now put the system in and start working our way through. For the mounting of the system, it's a bit funky. Let's say, let's say that, it's a bit funky. Um, you can have it upwards or downwards. 
Um, so you could literally have the system kind of have the motherboard hanging from the top, or if you invert the actual system across, you can have it pointing downwards. Uh, that really just depends how you prefer having it. So where you want to route your cables, where you want to route your cables to the bottom and maybe out, or at the top and kind of running at the back, somehow completely up to you. That's where the flexibility of the system comes in. I want to just make it easier for me for the time being, and I'm gonna have all my IO pointing downwards. So this is the motherboard tray over here. So what we need to do is just slot this motherboard, kind of get in there, and plop it down. Yep, there you go. It just nicely slots in. Now we can deal with the cables and stuff later. So it's kind of nice that it actually goes in and stays there so you don't actually have to hold it in your hands or balance it. Um, and again, you can install it like this and turn the whole case upside down and you're good to go. Uh, completely up to you. I do want to flag one kind of little minor but important issue. Uh, when I was mounting this, on one side, I could screw in the screws no problem at all, but there is a slight tolerance issue on this right hand side pole. The tolerance on this pole was maybe about one nail out. Therefore, I had to kind of force the screw in. Uh, the board is okay and like it's nice and rigid and there's a little bit of flex in it, so it's fine, but it's probably on a line of my comfort zone. So something to be aware of moving forward. One thing to consider is you actually do need to pre-plan certain things. Uh, in this case, I probably should have addressed the cooler by now, but let me deal with it now. And I'll just go through and show you the finished kind of product as far as the mounts are concerned, because I think I have a special bracket they need to install for the motherboard in order to use this cooler. The cooler itself can be mounted a bit later, and this is where these um, poles go in, and you can tighten them in the right place for whatever you want to do. Having a case which is flexible is great, but it also does add some complexities. When you start fiddling out with different components, you don't quite know exactly where they're going to be unless you've pre-planned it, I don't know, in CAD or something. So for that reason, we've removed a cable management um, doohickey, and we've also installed the power supply as well. So I just installed it just above the motherboard and just kind of to the side. This is just an SFX power supply, so it's nothing too big. Um, uh, so, but it's now just out of the way. Uh, that's not its final position, but the beauty is, all you need to do is just loosen up these bolts and you can move them around whatever you like. So you can loosen up these and go up and down, loosen up these, go left and right. So you have flexibility. Next, we need to install the PC riser. This case by default does not come with PC riser. And uh, Streetcom actually says the reason for it is because you might want Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5. So it's hard to deal with it. But also some people may already have one, but you can buy it from them. And there are two ways of mounting it. First, obviously, you still need to install it straight into the PC slot. And then if you had it mounted beforehand, you can actually just wrap it around the motherboard and kind of go behind and then wrap it around this pole, come out and leave it there. I'm gonna go down the more easy way. Uh, it may not look as good, but it's a bit more flexible in terms of just the lens. And I am a bit afraid to remount the whole thing again. Um, one thing to note is if you do want to install the M.2 slot at the back, you might want to do it now because once I've installed it, this will actually cover it. So you can't have a particularly big one with a big heatsink, um, but you can still reach it, but it's it gonna be a lot more awkward. And then for mounting the PC bracket alone, you need to unscrew this and can screw back together. You can actually have this moved left and right ever so slightly. So there's some flexibility there as well. So I'm not sure if we're gonna need it in the end. Uh, and you can also install standoffs. The graphics card will go in and it will sit here. This is obviously a small graphics card, so you can do whatever you like with it. Uh, let me just check out the other graphics card that we have. So we have a 3080, a Strix 3080. It's going to have a very, very tight fit in here, but it should be fitting. After trying it for a little while, I realized that basically to put in a 3080 like this, I need to remove this uh, connector first. So I can slot the card in this way and then plonk it in. Like physically, it fits. It's not easy, but it will fit. But 
it's actually just a bit of a pain because we've got this connector here. Uh, it, you can remove it, but I think they actually use some Loctite on it. So the screws are actually really, really tightly in there. But since it wasn't never the plan to use the 3080 anyway, I'm gonna put this to the side. The idea is to use a mid-size card, or something that used to be really big back in the last generation, but is no longer considered big this generation. So we're gonna have a 6900 XT, and they should fit pretty easily. There you go, in, click, and click. That's down place. Easy. This is like so much easier. And I'm just gonna remove it now so I can put the cable in. So the cable goes across. Then we're gonna put the card in and we can screw the card in. Now, so I need to mount this over here and then screw the other bit across. For that, we have some of these um, extensions. So this screw, as you can see, is the right size. Obviously with the newer cards, if they're not too thick, it's best to leave a bit of a gap because a lot of them are using a flow through design and you wanna leave an ability for the air to just escape out of the case. Uh, it is an open case, but if you cram everything together, it is still gonna get hot. So just have the ability to circulate and spread it all out. And with this particular setup, the graphics card is not even sticking out, so it's nice. But to be honest, with a case like this, I personally don't think that keeping everything within the constraints of the case is the most important thing. It's what you prefer. And if it's got this kind of quirky little look to it, um, as long as you like it, go for it. Uh, let me just get on with that now. Just a little bit of progress has happened. We removed the power supply and installed the cooler on the outside. And that is all to do with the main cooler assembly to have a screen pointing outwards. It's kind of in line with the case itself. Uh, in the meantime, I've also decided that it's gonna be an inverted case. So the connections for the cables will be at the bottom and I had to move the main power switch. So essentially you just have two screws over here. So one is still left and the other one that just came out here. So you remove these. There are two more spots at the top. So basically you just go, okay, I'm gonna decide, I've decided the case is gonna be starting from the front here. Yep. And you kind of pull it in, screw in place, and just use the screws to tighten it down. Um, actually, I'm gonna move it to the back. The reason for it is the cables here won't look as good because this is like the clean side. And that's pretty much the theme that we've had throughout the whole of the build. It's, you know, you can do whatever you like and even if you don't like it you know after a week you can rebuild it in a very unique and different way um, this could have easily ended up inside uh, we could have placed it inside here well not here because this is, actually has a really big block but a similar cooler could have ended up inside so that's not a big deal even with one screw that's not going anywhere but it comes with two screws so it's nice uh, what's interesting is this case actually can have a lot of different modules. So you could, this particular one is using a power button and a USB type C, even though it actually ends up as USB three connector like this. But uh, they also have a bunch of different kinds, uh, different modules. Uh, you can buy separately from them on the website. We're now at the finish line where we need to put in the power supply, add in the graphics card and do some cable management. Uh, one thing to note is these little washers that come with the case are actually very useful for just mounting devices to the poles. Uh, while in some devices you can just use the screw and kind of clamp the pole, but if you use it with the washer, it really clamps down. Let me show you. Once it goes in between, it just clamps down. And that is just generally not moving anywhere, which is really awesome. Let me just quickly do all the cable management and put the graphics card in, and we can close this off. So, well... I'll close it off, it's an open case. After messing around with it for a little while, we finally have the finished product. And I think it looks chunky, funky, and kind of interesting actually. Um, there are a few things that we've learned. Uh, one of the things is making sure that for these connections over here, so when you connect the two together, two sections together, they need to make sure to kind of align properly with the adapter on the other end. Um, if you have one adapter connected at the top, 
you might need to connect it at the bottom on the other side, but you want to make sure it's kind of even. Uh, otherwise, like on the connections like this, it starts to kind of warp and it applies unnecessary pressure on the, uh, the connections themselves, which is not healthy. Um, as you can see, we've mounted all this all these componentry and we have let, loads of leftover parts. That's because, well, it's kind of universal. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, you can actually mount a bunch of drives in here. Um, well, not in here right now. That's more than what you should probably mount inside this right now, considering that I have, you know, a 240 mil rad. But yeah, there's, there's other improvements you can do. Uh, this particular power supply, um, I'd probably say if I did this again, probably flip it upside down. The reason I left it like this is because the included cable that it comes with is just so much more convenient to kind of mount it and plug it in this way. If the passport was inverted, I'd have to have like a loop around and it just doesn't look as good. So most of the cables are hidden in between. So this is a sandwich and um, well, the cable is our ham. Um, but I think it's kind of well hidden. Um, it would be better if you had custom left cabling that would definitely improve things and make everything look a bit better. And if you're building a system like this and you really want it to show off, then you, that's probably what you should do. The other bit is over here. The tubes are, they've got some pressure on them. Uh, they're holding well and um, they're not too bent. This, the one at the back, I'd say it's kind of on the line of, maybe I should loosen it a bit, but um, let's power this up and see if it, well, see if it boots. I do like that we have easy access for the power supply switch. So that didn't explode, that's good. And... I hear the pump running, that's good. With the system powered up, it kind of looks like some sort of loot you might find in one of the boxes within the game. Or maybe it's an intergalactic bomb or something that you might use for mining. So with that in mind, let's get into the game and try to play it and see if this actually performs the way that it looks. Well, well the look of it is kind of edgy and sketchy, but I personally like that. I also like the fact that it's flexible. Uh, if you don't like how it looks right now, you can just turn it around to another side and have it a completely different look from it. Um, honestly speaking, if you don't like it this way either, you can just put it down or flip it the other way. There's actually no limit to what you want to do. Um, if you really wanted to, you can just flip it upside down, but my cable is too short right now. Um, you can see the cables are just tucked in over underneath there. And again, you can cable manage them the way you like. Uh, and yeah, on what angle, you know, you might want to see the graphics card. I actually kind of like the cooler sticking out. Um, it looks like a hot rod, so it's fun. And since we have loads of parts left over, what you can actually do if you don't like this look, use the different components and move things around. Uh, you could literally be changing the equipment that you have in here or the way that it appears uh, on a weekly basis. There's actually a lot of opportunity. So from that perspective, this is actually a really cool case. But let's get into the game. What we're seeing here, we're seeing an average of 32 FPS. That's not great. Let's see, let's change our settings a bit. So gameplay, um, in display. So we have 40, so we've got 4K turned on. We've got upscaling with FSI enabled. Uh, V-Sync, why is this on? Definitely don't need V-Sync and tab and come out of this. There we go, VSync disabled, and we instantly have average 90 FPS. That's considering that we've got ultra settings on, but with FSI enabled. So a bit of uh, upscaling and stuff, but still pretty nice. Let's fly somewhere. We need to get to this location over here. So, so landing and fly in. I did play the game a little bit and still exploring it, so bear with me here. Yeah, the FPS is still dropped down to below 60 here. Let's go for a little walk around the planet. Definitely a little lagging over there. But I did try to build a 1440p 
uh, machine, this is actually playing at 4K. So let me just drop the settings down and see if the experience is going to get much worse. There you go. Not a fan of that, but uh, it does work. That does improve. It will slightly ignore the, the window screen for the time being. But the idea behind it is what kind of performance we can get out of this. And we're averaging about 104 FPS right now. That dips, definitely dips. Uh, the one percentiles are at 66 FPS. That's not bad at all. Uh, to be honest, I think with the pace of the game right now, uh, especially with me just messing around, uh, you could easily go 4K and have your FPS a bit lower, but it does look a lot better. 1440p is notably worse when you're playing on the 4K display. Right, let's get back in here and see what we need to do. I can definitely feel the hot air coming out of the GPU. And the beauty with that is the hot air is actually just escaping into the room rather than concentrating inside the case, which means that it's actually keeping cooler because it's always being fed with fresh air. So I can definitely feel warmth over here, but not as much at the front of the GPU itself. The cooler, oh, the cooler is fine. There's nothing here. And it's not even that loud. Should we just be annoying and attack someone? Slowly becoming a pirate. Whoa. You're shiver. Oh, okay. I think I'm getting destroyed. Yep, that's it. That's me messing around with somebody and becoming a pirate and getting killed. Uh, well, there we go. So the game definitely plays. Uh, 1440p with this current setup with disabling dynamic resolution and still have a sign enabled, uh, works really well. I can easily get 60 FPS and above. I've managed to hit my target of setting up a 1440p station in this Starfield themed case, uh, well, a frame, and I actually really enjoyed building it. It does have some caveats and it can be a bit fiddly, but as long as you're into doing a bit of DIY and just messing around with it, it's actually really, really fun. Uh, it's a bit like a PC Lego in some way, or well, actually just more custom. Uh, but you get given all the parts that you need to build on it, so that's kind of good. And as I said, loads of optimizations that you can do with it. You can improve the build um, if you really want to. You could put that cooler inside. Uh, you might need to move things around. Uh, in this particular case, because of the pump and uh, AO head here, uh, you won't be able to place it here. But uh, with other coolers, you could easily do that. With this build complete, what do you guys think? I would like to get some feedback into would you actually buy a case like this and uh, how would you use it? Would you potentially make a full water cooling build on it, like a custom water loop? Uh, I think that would look really, really cool. You can make it really exotic and still kind of hold it all in place. Maybe even with two radiators just kind of having both sides, kind of just hugging the whole place. Uh, let me know in the comments below and uh, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and we'll see you guys in the next one.